If I've been a UX designer for the last 14 years, just imagine how many times have I been rejected? Somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion 300 million. On top of that, I've also spent nearly a million dollars of my own money in hiring designers, marketers, and product managers over the last six years. Which means I know what it's like to get rejected, to get accepted, and I also know what a good and bad performing designer looks like in the early stages of the hiring process. So here's exactly what I would be doing if I was struggling to land a job interview. But first, let's build context. Here, the hiring process tends to be three to four stages depending on the company. First, we have application, first round, second round, and then the third round. Now, in this video, we'll focus just on the application process because if you can't even land an interview, there's no real point in talking about the others. The application process is where you submit your CV and your portfolio for the job. And your goal is to land an interview with either the recruiter or the in-house designer. But remember, there's probably 30 to 100 other applicants applying for the same role. And the person that's skimming through all the CVs and portfolios isn't a robot. They're human. They get tired. They get bored. They get fatigued. So with that in mind, what are you actually doing to put yourself in the best light possible. Hmm, well, there seems to be a bit of silence. So let's dive into the four steps. First, we wanna update our LinkedIn. LinkedIn can act as a resume or CV if you are applying for a job. But let's remember, recruiters and employers tend to stalk their prey on the platform as well, even if you didn't apply via LinkedIn. So always keep this up to date. Remember, you have to capture the employee's attention within a couple of seconds. So make sure your cover photo is engaging. Your profile photo is well lit and it doesn't look like it's been taken by my 87 year old grandpa. Your tagline represents some of your key achievements to quickly let the viewer know why they should consider you. You also utilize the featured links to showcase some of your best work and you have an elaborate about me section that further breaks down all your achievements in detail. And believe me, employers read this. And you have all your experiences added to your portfolio as well with logos, a clear description of what your role entailed and numbers to quantify your impact. And of course, graphical assets to make your experience more appealing. Now remember, first impressions really do matter. And it's these details that so many people overlook and get lazy doing. There we wanna make sure we are updating our CV. Remember, an employer is looking through tens of hundreds of CVs a day when they are vetting profiles. So it is so important for you to make it easy to digest and that you've structured your CV well. Now, here's an example of how I've helped a student optimize their CV. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Lewis's resume. Lewis is a UX and UI designer or product designer for the last three years. He previously was the full-time designer and the solo designer for a fintech startup. Now, I've taken a look at his work and he definitely, from a UI point of view, he's got the skills to move into more of a mid-level role. So since that position, Lewis has decided to take some time off and really prepare himself to apply for new roles. He's been faced with a problem. Companies have been rejecting him and he hasn't been able to really land an interview. I've given him feedback in terms of portfolio, his case studies, but I really wanna focus on just the resume part. Once again, he probably might have been rejected because the portfolio was falling behind or his case studies were confusing. But remember, we need to make sure that all these mechanics, all these different assets that we're putting towards the company need to be optimized. So I wanna focus on just the resume purely for this video. With that understanding, taking a look at Lewis's resume, where do you feel like he's really falling behind in terms of just the resume? Have a think about it, feel free to pause the video and once you've got your thoughts, you can resume. Here are my initial thoughts. 
So knowing that Lewis is fairly young, and it's also a problem that I face as well, having a bit of a, a baby face, you seem young and people can make assumptions based on your experience. So with that in mind, what can we do to really make sure that his resume positions him in the best light possible? So the first thing that I noticed was that there was a lot of text and we needed some graphical elements to really just break up the content just to make it easier to read. I also noticed that we weren't really talking about the objectives that he was able to achieve or the outcomes that he was able to achieve for each position. So there's a bit of a description, but as a recruiter or an employer, I want to know what was your impact. Tell me that straight away. Cut the bullshit, get straight to that. And then it doesn't really feel like he's got much experience. He's got more education than actual experience. When people are hiring, they want to make sure that they are hiring people who can come in and just get the job done. So I asked him, what can we do to actually make him feel like He's got more experience without lying or making things up. This is about optimizations. We are presenting the same information in just a different way. So I asked him to really bring out all the different clients that he's worked uh, for during his freelance period. There was an, an extra three, four or five uh, different companies. I also asked him to rewrite his descriptions to really focus on or really bring out the outcomes. So after doing that, Lewis actually went ahead and provided this over to me. And once again, I took a look at it and I can definitely see that he's gone and used graphical elements to break out the different sections and also used logos to really bring out colors, a bit more aesthetics. But now what I've noticed is that his resume is starting to fill up. It starts to feel like he's got more experience and we're not lying. We are just representing information in a different way. But the one thing is that it's starting to feel a little bit cluttered. And remember, these people, the employees and the uh, recruiters, they're scanning lots of resumes. So we wanna make sure that the readability and the experience of going through the resume is delightful. So what I've done is actually gone ahead and revised a bit of his resume to make sure that we are bringing focus to the right areas and making sure it doesn't feel overwhelming and it doesn't feel like it's too cluttered. So as you can see in the final resume over here, I've taken attention away from the education without the logos because education is important, but people, employers and recruiters are looking for experience. So I'm bringing the logos and the focus towards the actual employment areas. I've also reordered the uh, items in the most recent all the way to the oldest experience over here, but he's had it in reverse, which makes it a little bit harder to understand where is he at now. I've also brought out the key outcome that he's been able to uh, achieve at these different companies. If you were to compare this resume over to this one, within just a quick glance, you feel like Lewis in 3.0 as one, two, and three, has a lot more experience than Lewis 1.0, but really 1.0 is the same as 3.0, but the information is just represented in a different way. Now remember, the resume is just one of the things that you need to optimize. Lewis is also working on a new portfolio and he's also been working on his case studies. And I genuinely believe during this process, as he starts to optimize all these different assets and he starts to apply for jobs, He's going to be putting his best foot forward and then we can start to reassess the progress from there. Then we want to make sure we are building an engaging portfolio. A lot of designers I've spoken to who have struggled to land an interview admit they are not happy with their portfolio. So you all know that if you aren't proud of your own work, no one else will be. Now, I know it can be overwhelming and require a lot of work which demotivates most designers. So here's how I want you to think about it. If you are struggling to land a job, instead of spending two weeks trying to learn a new tool and build it from scratch and juggle everything else in life, I want you to use your time resourcefully. So remember, the outcome is to land an interview, meaning the portfolio needs to meet a standard. So if you were time boxing two weeks for this project, I would recommend you to go buy a template that already looks great on platforms like Webflow or Framer and spend the two weeks on making sure your case studies 
and the actual content going into your portfolio is banging. There should be no excuses for messy screenshots of the work, unpolished UI designs, or dodgy mockups that look cheap. This way you can actually spend the time effectively and not spread yourself too thin. And then finally, apply for the most relevant roles. There is a time and place for bigger and better roles, but navigating your career should be calculated. For example, if you are a junior designer, apply for a junior role. But the seniority isn't the only variable you benchmark yourself with. There's also the type of company. For example, if you have a little experience in working in a freelance or agency environment, apply for an agency type of role because you probably have a higher chance to land that position. You probably already have the client management skills. You can juggle multiple projects at a time and you have other skills that agencies look for. Then there's also the type of industry. If you have a little experience in fintech, apply for more fintech roles because you probably already have the domain knowledge, which means you're maximizing your chances of success. As you can see, always try to land roles that are most relevant and most suitable for you. This is what they mean by calculated risk. You're optimizing your efforts based on minimizing the risk of failure. And as you start to build more confidence and more experience, you can obviously go and sidestep and pivot into other roles in different industries. Please remember, this is not the only way you can land a job. I am just breaking down the key things that you must optimize for the most standard way of landing a job. If you are very serious about landing a role, explore more creative ways to reach out to employers and founders directly. For example, if you want to land a job at Figma, build your CV or portfolio in Figma with some snazzy components and send them a prototype link instead. If you want to land a job at Airbnb, maybe record a video at an Airbnb and pitch yourself so you stand out from the boring CVs. Just remember, the sky is the limit and I hope that this really did inspire you to take action and also think outside the box. Now, if you like this video, make sure to gently smash that like button because it really does help this channel. Subscribe for the Dahad fans. And if you want to learn more, make sure to check out this video.